This video shows how to use JSIM to simulate Kolkhoff and Muller Hills data. JSIM can be downloaded from the Physiome website. Just do a Google search for JSIM. The model equations and data are available from this publicly accessible Dropbox folder. So just type that into the URL of a web browser and you'll get to these files. They, you can download them. One, two, three, four, five files, uh, in, including model equations. And they're all contained in this zip file here, so you can alternatively download that and extract the files from that. You can open the model equations simply with Notepad. This will give you a view of all the equations and the parameters. So they're all set out there as a text file, exactly as they're used by the simulation software. Having downloaded the project files, we now want to open it with JSIM. Let us remind ourselves of the aim of our simulation. So this is the expression system that we're simulating. In particular, we want to look at the effect of mutations in the C1 dimer and determine values for the parameters, uh, determine parameters relevant to the C1 mutants. So the mutations in the helix turn helix region of the dimer have altered their ability to bind to DNA and their ability to activate transcription. C1 has two modes of action. First, C1 protein, when bound at OR3, represses transcription. It does this by preventing RNA polymerase from binding to promoter PRM. Alternatively, if C1 is bound at OR2, beside adjacently bound RNA polymerase, then it activates transcription. So C1 can either repress or activate transcription of LAC-Z. We model this by changing these parameters, so the activation parameter and the mutation parameter. So this, the, the degree of activation by wild type and the mutants have all lost that ability and have no degree of activation. Alternatively, they have increased or uh, they may have increased binding to promoter OR3. So the degree of increase uh, for PC1 is 15 times 0.005 to take it to 0 0.075 nanomolars to the minus 1. PC3 in particular binds very tightly to OR3 and dramatically re um, decreases transcription. So we want to look at how we can incorporate these changes of transcription uh, parameters in our model. Once we have opened our model, we now need to find our project file that we've downloaded from Dropbox. So we're going to open the project file. When we find it, we select it. it it's com comb underscore 01.proj. We select it and open it. It drags in all the data files as well as uh, the source file. So if we click up the top here, we can see all the model inputs. We can see this source file. So that's all the equations. If we look over at the side, we'll see that when it dragged it in, it automatically compiled it and it says terminated normally. So this is the right hand panel. Going back to the left hand panel, our next action is to select the model itself. Uh, so that's the initial page, but if we go up here to the top, um, no, 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 no.
and to come down here we want the run time so I've got these two selected run up the top oh I've already clicked it <laughs> let's have a look what happens so at the side here terminated normally now I'll look at the plot so we've generated this black line curve through the data points for PC3 so again there's IPT on this x-axis though here it's in nanomoles uh, rather than in molar form so it's nanomoles rather than moles per litre and on this axis we've got beta galactoside A's production now we wish to uh, simulate the wild type data these red circles so we go back here now we need our table of values. For wild type, uh, activation of transcription factor is 5.3 and there's no increased binding to OR3, so that's 1. So 5.3 and 1. So in these model inputs, we need this one to be 5.3 and down here, 1 and go back up here click run and lo and behold come across and now we are simulating the wild type data it's pretty good it goes through the uh, rising section of data points very well and this data over here is a bit noisy but it seems to model them really well now let's model PC1 all right, so we're going to need a 1 and a 15. So we need 1 here and 15 times tighter binding and click up the top run. And we our data curve, our simulated curve now goes through the data points for PC1.